Hey guys, so this is our second session in PLTW Digital Electronics Tutorials and today we're going to be going over activity 1.1.2 and specifically 1.1.2a which discusses creating a circuit and measuring a circuit's properties. So let's just quickly go into Tinkercad and I've already pressed create a new circuit and I've renamed mine to Exploring Basics AA, my initials. and so you see all these basic circuits and they're all very important and we're, we'll go into depth into each one of them and what they do. But one of the most important ones is a breadboard. So let's bring in this breadboard. And one big question is what is a breadboard and another is why are we using a breadboard. So a breadboard or sometimes called a proto board is basically a reusable platform which uh, we can use to temporarily create like some electronic circuits. And the key word in that is temporary because one of the main reasons we're using breadboards is because they allow us, the designer, to uh, change up the circuit and see how and if it functions correctly. And another big reason is that it's uh, pretty cost efficient. Obviously, we're doing everything digitally, but in the real world, this stuff does all cost money, right? So it's very cheap to get a breadboard and, and on a breadboard, once again, we can test out as many things as we want. And on a breadboard, it's important to understand how the current flows in a breadboard. So you can see these huge horizontal strips. So the current flows all throughout here. So if I were to put in some current here and place a circuit, like a component here, it would still get that current and that electricity. And so it flows like that throughout these huge horizontal strips. And for these short five whole like vertical strips, that uh, that's how they flow through the five whole vertical strips so it flows through a b c d e right and each of these like short succession so i think there's 30 right here right so each of the 30 it just flows through in these five and same thing for these other five so they're not connected they're just each of these separate five so let's just make a quick circuit and measure it so i'll bring in my led and we need power obviously so I'll bring in a power supply so I can change the value if I wanted to. And we have this red, which is positive, and black, which is negative. So red goes to red, obviously. So let's supply it right here. Oh, and I forgot. We put our LED on. So let's just place it anywhere we'd like. And I like to keep it all nice and organized. And it's important that you guys do too, right? Just so when you refer back to it, you're able to follow the mess, right? anything goes wrong and also follow what's happening right the goal is to learn from it not just to get it to work and obviously when you see this nothing's supposed to happen because the LED is not connected into these holes so the way we can do that let me first color these wires I'll just make red positive and this black negative so obviously it's not gonna work because we haven't connected anything to the red to this LED so let's connect the positive to the anode always and the negative to the cathode. So it's going to flow through and power this LED. So when we start simulation, oh, my bad. I connected it to the wrong line. Yep, right there. Right, so we see that it is powering it, but obviously a little too much because it's uh, breaking this LED. So one way to stop so much power from flowing to it is through with a resistor, which will basically obstruct this current and this voltage and uh, allow for the components to function with the correct current, which in this case is 20 milliamps. And we are actually supplying it with 483 milliamps, which is way, way too much. So let me delete this. And I stop the simulation. Let me delete these two lines too. And let's go ahead and plug this right here. And I'll color code them all at the end. Let's bring in this resistor. Let's make it horizontal. And either which way of the resistor is fine. There's no, not like the LED where there's an anode and a cathode where you have to supply a positive and a negative. The resistor can be used both ways. So I have this resistor right here, and you can see that we're bridging these lines. I don't know if you can see it that well, but we're bridging lines 15 and 19 right here. So we're transferring that electricity from, it's passing through here, going up to the wire, 
into the resistor and coming out in this line. So let's put the LED there so we can access this and we'll bring the wire and connect it back down. So let me just quickly color code this, make sure it's all fine. And with the resistor, you can also change how much resistance. And one thing you'll notice is as we change it, let me just make this two. You'll see that the colors change on it. Let me change it one more time so you guys can catch that. And we'll, uh, in the next video, we'll go into a deeper understanding of why these components are changing as you change the, how the colors uh, correspond to the resistance value for the resistors. So let's start the simulation and we see it lights up and this time it does not break. So that's that first part where we're creating a circuit and now we just have to learn how to measure a circuit's property. So the way we're going to measure all the properties is through a digital multimeter. right? And this is just used to measure what we're doing here in the pro program. right? And it's a very useful tool and it's going to help us understand the current voltage and resistance. So just like how we did earlier, we placed the red and black leads in the appropriate area. So let me say, let's put it right here. This next one, let's put it right there. So we're going to measure the voltage, change in voltage. So once again, let me change those. Right. and it's measuring the voltage so it's measuring that this resistor is taking off uh, it's measuring how much velocity I mean velocity sorry voltage is passing through this circuit and based on where you place these it's going to measure different things obviously so let's let's move this around quickly so I can show you this so I placed it right there with the LED. So it, sh it should give us the same answer, but it doesn't because we're seeing that the the voltage is going to be reduced once it passes through this LED as well. So this LED, even though it may not seem like it, is also kind of a resistor because all of these components are going to be taking up some form of current and voltage as the electricity passes through them. So that's how to use the digital multimeter and the digital multimeter you can change what you what you measure as well and peerage voltage and resistance so you can use all three and this was just a quick tutorial on how to use all these simple components I know I kind of sped through it but if you guys like it's a YouTube video so you can always pause and rewind just to see what I'm doing so let me bring it back to how it was before because I liked it like that and that's it for today so thank you for watching and I will be showing you more soon to come okay thank you bye